I can't believe it, but they found Amazon's patent for Rufus AI. And this is going to change everything. This patent reveals the complex systems behind Rufus that will fundamentally change how Amazon connects products with shoppers, including concepts like the semantic similarity model, click training data, and visual label tagging. I'm gonna explain all of that to you today and what it means for brands selling on Amazon. Good morning and welcome to the Retail Media Breakfast Club. I'm your host, Kiri Masters, and every weekday at 6 a.m. Eastern, I bring you candid and real discussions in the world of retail media and marketplaces in just 10 minutes. So bring your own cup of coffee and we'll get smarter about retail media together. Look, say what you will about Rufus from a consumer standpoint, it doesn't always get it right. But just remember, this is the worst it will ever be right now. And I am personally so bullish on conversational AI commerce that I'm willing to bet we will not be using keywords to search on Amazon in two years time. Just looking through this material gives me so much confidence that this is the way that Amazon is heading. It's going to be the best type of shopping experience. And what I'm pulling from today is an excellent white paper from Amazon strategist Danny McMillan, AI developer Andrew Bell, and growth strategist Juana Padarariu, who were the ones who actually located Amazon's patent for Rufus AI and have broken down in a really digestible way what the different aspects of the patent mean, some examples, and what it means for brands. So I will link up to that report in the show notes. It's not a gated report. You can go straight there. It's wonderful. They have also uploaded the original patent as well, if you want to read that too. So well done to that team for locating the patent and doing an excellent breakdown. Let's get into some of the big takeaways here. So let's first talk about the semantic similarity model from the patent. At the heart of Rufus is its semantic similarity model, which is far more sophisticated than Amazon's previous A9 algorithm. And this is really important. For the last 10, 15 years, we've been working off the Amazon A9 algorithm, which includes factors like relevance to keywords, recent sales velocity, things like that. That's the model that we've been working off. Rufus is based on this semantic similarity model, which analyzes the relationships between phrases and concepts, understanding not just what the words mean, but how they relate to each other. And here's how it works. The model processes what it calls n-grams, which is sequences of words that carry meaning when analyzed together. So when a customer asks, how do you take off gel nails? Rufus's semantic analysis identifies pure acetone as a key solution, even though that word wasn't even in that question. So this is the semantic bridge between the query and the relevant products. They are logical connections based on actual problem solving relationships. The second major component is click training data. Click training data continuously learns from user behavior. And the pattern describes it as a sophisticated feedback loop where customer interactions refine Rufus's semantic understanding. So when customers click on certain products after specific queries, this data helps Rufus build what the pattern calls inference pathways, essentially learning which products truly solve which customer problems. And I recently wrote an article for Forbes analyzing Rufus and one area in particular that showed real promise was in personalization. And the patent's click training data system aligns with what we're seeing in practice out there, which is that recommendations within Rufus vary significantly based on users' historic purchase behavior and price points. So this is all starting to match up. We're seeing personalization and the click training data is the mechanism behind that. And what I personally love about this as a consumer is we've all come across these product pages on Amazon that are just stuffed with keywords, right? You know, fashion is a really good example where there'll be a dress and it will say, 
very contradictory search terms because the seller has just stuffed all these search terms in there. So it'll say, you know, long maxi dress mini skirt or something like that. And it's just been stuffed in there. You don't know from the title or the description what it actually is. And so Rufus has a smarter way of understanding what the product actually is through this click training data as well. So all of that over-engineered keyword stuffing is going to be completely useless in the next era of product content optimization. And then the final concept I want to leave you with from the paper is visual label tagging. And this is perhaps one of the most revolutionary parts in that Amazon is processing product images alongside text, creating what they call multimodal connections between visual features, product descriptions, and customer queries. So this indicates that Rufus doesn't just see product images and it's not just analyzing text. It is looking at images and understanding them in context. So to my previous point about keyword stuffing and product description not really matching what the product is, Rufus is going to be looking across all that different type of content and making a conclusion about what it is, who it's for, and what the actual features and benefits are. So for brands, this means that having really great product photography isn't just about attractive images anymore. The visual label technology requires strategic labeling and organization that aligns with the product's semantic strategy. The pattern suggests specifically that including text overlays highlighting key features and labeling diagram points will help with Rufus's understanding of what that product is. So these three systems work together what the report authors term noun phrase optimization, which is an approach to product listings that focuses on building semantically rich descriptions. So not keyword stuffing, but creating content that builds clear semantic pathways between customer problems and product solutions. Now, it wasn't really covered in either the patent or this report, but I started to naturally think about advertising <laughs> and what are the implications for advertising on Amazon with Rufus? We know that with A9, there wasn't a direct advertising component, but high sell-through rates heavily influenced organic ranking creating a cycle where if you were really good at advertising and driving clicks and conversions, you could boost your organic visibility through advertising in a sort of indirect way. But Rufus's click training data system is going to change that. There's going to be a more nuanced relationship between paid and organic visibility because Rufus prioritizes genuine problem solution relationships. So think of it this way, under A9, advertising could compensate for weak organic optimization. But under Rufus, advertising amplifies strong semantic optimization, but can't make up for poor semantic relevance. So my recommendation here is to really leverage the data assets within Seller Central and Vendor Central and your advertising console to understand the semantic phrases that customers are using to look for your products, looking at those high conversion, high click through search terms and starting to build that noun phrase optimization. So be looking at your search term reports, your campaign performance reports, the reviews from customers and Q&A sections and brand analytics reports. So I don't think I'm overstating it enough to say that Rufus is going to change the way that we shop on Amazon. So it's going to also change how brands optimize their product content and their advertising strategy with Amazon. And whatever Amazon does, other retailers are gonna follow suit as well. So I recommend checking out this paper. It's a really great overview, digging into the patent. So definitely check out this research paper for a deeper dive into these concepts and well done to the team who put it together. See you tomorrow. Well, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Retail Media Breakfast Club. We meet here every day at 6 a.m. Eastern. So be sure to subscribe and get your daily dose of insights, trends, and hot takes in the world of retail media and marketplaces.